I think we can all agree that out there on the internet, there are people that are trying to do bad stuff to get into our servers. And the first line of defense against that is going to be the firewall. Now, if you're anything like me, the thought of setting up a firewall against all the dangers that are on the internet is quite a scary prospect. And I would much rather someone who were more expert than me in security were in charge of that. Now obviously the cost of getting a consultant in to do all this for you is quite expensive so if you follow the documentation and you use a best practices approach which we can do by leveraging Ansible all we need to do is look inside the Rancher documentation for the port details and then use them as configuration for our Ansible role. Now of course if you're in an enterprise or whatever then get a consultant or someone that knows security inside out to make sure that this stuff is all set up for you that should go without saying. A firewall is going to block off everything to the outside world and we have to selectively poke holes in it. And the way that we poke those holes is to tell it which ports to open. Kubernetes in particular requires quite a few open ports and I would recommend that you check out the Rancher docs yourself for the full list. Now we want our firewall rules to apply to every host that we create for our Rancher 2 cluster. Therefore by using the firewall allowed TCP ports config which I'm going to find straight from the documentation, we can ensure that our expected configuration applies to any node which we add to this group. And at this point, it's just a process of taking what's in the documentation and putting it into configuration. It's quite a long-winded process and it's not very interesting to see, so I'm going to fast forward through this. Under the allowed TCP ports and the allowed UDP ports, we've specified individual ports that we wish to open up. We also need to open up an entire range of ports starting at port 30,000 up to 32767. One of the nice things about this role in particular is it allows us to specify actual IP tables commands. This way we can quickly match multiple ports for both TCP and UDP traffic. Again, all of this information is taken directly from the Rancher docs and you just need to look as to whether the port that you need to open is TCP or UDP. At this point you will probably hit on a little gotcha with our setup and that's that the role ordering in our Ansible playbook is really important. We're going to have to run the firewall role before the docker role. There seems to be a known issue and what this means is in your case most likely you're going to need to destroy and then completely reprovision your server. Now normally this would be an absolute nightmare but thanks to Ansible this is just a bit of an inconvenience really. The reason I don't have to do it in this video is, as I've mentioned in a previous video, between each one of these videos, I'm destroying and then rebuilding my server. And the reason for that is I record these videos over many days and keeping one of these servers online when I'm doing nothing with it is a bit pointless and quite costly. So what we should expect when we run our playbook is that firstly we install our common software, which is just HTOP in our case. Then it's going to install and configure IP tables. It's going to use the configuration that we've just specified. Immediately after that it's going to install docker and that's not going to conflict with our firewall anymore. Any additional rules will be added in but if the roles are the wrong way around what would have happened is that we potentially lose all our firewall config that we've just spent ages configuring. And then finally it will add in any users that we've specified. And again the ordering for that role is important because we need the user to go into the docker group and the only way that the docker group's going to be there is if docker itself has been installed. Now once this playbook run finishes and assuming that it finishes successfully, which it looks like it has, we should be able to SSH onto our remote server and you can see this is the first time I've connected to this server because again I've destroyed it and recreated it. And from there if we list out the active IP tables rules with IP tables dash uppercase L, we should see all our rules have been configured, which is really nice because honestly setting those up manually from the command line would be quite a horrible task. And it's certainly not one that you'd want to do on a per server basis. Now there's one extra task that I'm going to suggest that you do and you get into the habit of doing this whenever you add a new role and that's to update the requirements.yaml file. It's pretty straightforward, we've already covered this in the previous video. Take the output of the make list roles command and then add this into the requirements.yaml file using the source and version keys. This is particularly useful if you're working in a team but equally so if you're just moving computers or you have multiple computers that you need to work from and you want to make sure your environment is consistent. 